my beautiful Aquarian friends and welcome to your horoscope for July of 2020 where Aquarius this month this is a time where I really want to encourage you to take your downtime. You've got a lot of energy running through the 12th house. We're having another eclipse at trying to take us out of the Cancer Capricorn axis. So you've been working on 12th house things for a very long time. Take the slowdown. Take the endings, the transition, the assimilation of information, whatever you need that brings you into a slowdown, I would absolutely suggest that you take it this month. Not to mention, we have had so much going on in Gemini energies, a fellow air energy. There's been so much of the busy mind, busy information going on that if you can give yourself some, some downtime, some peace, some time to truly absorb the things that you've been learning and see how they fit into the new structure of your reality, I think that that is the big ticket for you this month. Now let's just get on in here and talk about what's happening this month. Right at the beginning of the month, Saturn, one of your traditional ruling planets, is in your sign retrograde. But so he's going to move out of your sign and move into the energy of Capricorn. So coming back into this 12th house space. Then we're going to have a lunar eclipse that happens on the 5th, also in this area. Now the full moon lunar eclipse says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. But it sheds all of this really big light because the sun and the moon are in opposition here, right? So it sheds this light on these things in this area of your life to allow you to see them for what they are. You see the true colors of things in this situation. So one of the things I just believe so much in with all of this information going on is what do you need to learn? What needs to stay? What needs to stick? And giving yourself time to really absorb that information. Part of learning is stopping to absorb. So something you may be seeing as this 12th house energy comes here, Saturn retrogrades and it says, where do we need to bring more self-discipline in? Where do we need to get organized? Where do we need this for our mastery? I think a part of what you're going to see here to adjust is the time that you're spending doing, 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 doing. And instead you got to spend some time just being re-looking over what needs to stick and what needs to stay. The other thing that I continue to think of as I look through the horoscope around this eclipse is that for the next six months, the 12th house connects to things that are hidden. So whether these are behaviors or belief patterns that you've had, you've been working on crystallizing them for a few years now. So it's not anything new that you're looking at. Instead, this is something you've already seen and it's asking if you have mastery over them. So over the next six months, you really get to see if you've made your progress on them, if you've learned the lesson in this area so that you're not self-sabotaging in whatever way that that belief system or that behavior system is doing that. I also still think that... Um, it is the place of the past as well. So being prophetic or having prophetic dreams or having dreams that maybe even feel like you're connected to guardian angels or ancestors or something like that is something that is definitely on your table with this energy. Now this full moon is going to show you how to trust that information. Is this the right information or have you been believing something that is not as clear as it could be and you need to relook at um your thought process around that. You need to re-look at your understanding of that information and maybe even do some more 12th house stuff, which is to research. This is a beautiful energy of research. And the research doesn't have to be all academic. This can be of a spiritual nature. What do you need in terms of information to crystallize this area of your life and to absorb and assimilate everything you've been learning? On the 11th, we have Chiron, our wounded healer, stepping into retrograde until December. Now, Chiron is our, our wounded healer, the hole in our soul, the place that we hurt the most, but it's also the place where we can passionately teach from. In the energy of Aries, this is talking a lot about the identity. And because this lights up the third house space for you, Aquarius, this is about your identity and how you communicate how you show up, how you perceive things. It's interesting in the third house energy, I kind of am wondering here too, Aquarius, if there's something going on where you are, <clears throat> excuse me, you're tackling this identity in your sibling structure, 
right? Like, have you always felt like you're the sibling that fill in the blank? Or have you always felt like your other sibling is the sibling that fills in the blank? But this Chiron and Aries energy here says, Aquarius, to thine own self be true. Your path is your path, no matter what it's needed to look like, no matter where you're at now. It also asks you to put down a fair amount of expectation and accept yourself, accept your identity where you are right here, right now. Now, Chiron and Aries as well, just because this is running through the third house, I do think that this is a delicious energy if you are writing something or you are studying something and it relates back to your identity or it relates back to how you want to be seen or maybe a way you've regarded yourself. We talked a lot at the beginning about the assimilation of information. So based on a new identity, based on some changes you've been making, based on spiritual information that has come to you and shift you and changed you, what are you learning? What are you writing? What are you ready to share and communicate out with? Either way, remember Chiron and Aries is asking you to come back to ground, to thine own self be true, and are are you doing that? On the 12th, we're going to see Mercury coming out of retrograde in the energy of Cancer. Now this lights up your sixth house space. So work, health, daily routines. You've been re-looking over all of these things, not to mention you've had this Saturnian energy, this Jupiter energy, this Pluto energy all over in the 12th house working on the space that we can't really see and it does translate over into the 6th house into a very tangible place that we can see but as mercury comes out of retrograde here first and foremost i think you have permission to make some day-to-day -day decisions right maybe you sign that contract for freelance work maybe you say yes i'm going to do this tele medicine appointment and really get my health under control we've had an eclipse in the 12th house so it can certainly bring some disruptions to the workplace, but I don't think it's a disruption like you lose your job. I think it's more of a disruption in the day-to-day, -day, how are we doing things? Of course, a good old pandemic will change your day-to-day -day doing things as well. But with Mercury out of retrograde here, you have some emotional intelligence and you have some intel in intellectual clarity, my goodness, some intellectual clarity to make some decisions to move this area forward. So because you've also got this energy in the third house, I'm wondering for somebody who's maybe freelance out there, is this you? Are you writing? Are you taking on a new freelance contract in some way, shape, or form? And this actually becomes your bread and butter. It actually becomes something that's got a fair amount of financial security attached to it as well. If you do employ people and you have to decide or you have to put regulations in place or day-to-day -day things, this will be a wonderful energy to help you be able to do that and maybe make make it a little bit smoother as well. But either way, the decisions are informed at this particular point in the month. Now on the 20th, we're also going to have a new moon at 28 degrees of Cancer. So again, it's lighting up the sixth house space, right? co-workers, the daily routine, the health. So because this is going to be a new moon and you can plant your seeds of intention to begin something here, I ask you, what do you want in your work life? In your day-to-day -day life, are you hanging out and you're already exhausted for tomorrow, right? Is there too much stress? Is there something that you need to pull in and have some more downtime in this 12th house space? Is there something you need to say no to? Is there something you need to say yes to? What do you want your daily routine and your health life and your work life to look like because this new moon is your chance to plant those seeds and watch them bloom out over the next four weeks. Now, as we end this month, we're going to end in the uh, with the sun in the energy of Leo. Now, this is big. It is bright. It is exciting. It is bold, right? There is a lot of drama to be seen around this. Now, this lights up across the street for you. So the seventh house, because the sun brings that light, heat, life, and motivation and so much movement to this area of your chart, I have no doubt that a significant person could be coming into your life. Now, does that make them significant because they're just bringing all the best things on the planet? Or are they significant because they come in and they challenge you in some way that really pushes you to grow or shapes a time in your life? That depends on your personal chart. But here we know with the sun lighting up relationships, being social, having a significant relationship come in or go out of your life is definitely something that's on the agenda. I have this sense, though, that this could be someone who is... Um, they're significant in your life because they teach you 
they teach you about you. They teach you about so much of this Chiron energy that I think we'll be digging into. They really put you in a position to have to stand for your own identity, to thine own self be true. But whatever it is, you can know that they're going to bring something quite bold to your table in the energy of Leo. And even yourself as you show up in relationships over this Leo season, where can you play more, Aquarius? Where can you laugh? Where can you accept people where they're, they are at in their own identities and just be be there for the joy. Be there for the play. I think that's a beautiful question to ask as we venture ourselves through um, through Leo season. All right, Aquarius, I think it is not going to be a dull month. I don't even know if we have dull months. Uh, we do have an eclipse this month, so that brings some shift and some change to the table. Please be careful and mindful of your health. Take the downtime, hydrate, sleep, do what you need to take care of you, okay? All right, Aquarius, I love you so much. I look forward to seeing you next month and in the eat and greets, in the solstice appointments, and of course, all around the web. So I love you guys and I'll see you next month. Bye, Aquarius.